I started sharing my screen. I will make it presentation mode now. Change the laser pointer and and here we go. So of course we are all painfully aware of the fact uh, uh, that the live uh, in the era of the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, uh, um, uh, which is very uh, the uh, what, what precludes me from actually being physically in Vienna today, which is a pity. Uh, but we are still lucky to be able to do it this way. So, in any case, in the days of the pandemic, uh, um, uh, virology uh, uh, evidently comes to the forefront. And it so happens uh, that convergently at the beginning of, of the pandemic, my colleagues and I uh, um, uh, made some, I dare say, breakthroughs in um, understanding of you know, the global organization, the evolution of the world of viruses, which allowed us or which prompted us to summarize that information, try to generate a coherent picture of the world of viruses and uh, its global chart, uh, uh, which I think is, is important in timely uh, uh, in order to place different viruses, including the uh, devastating coronaviruses, uh, into a more global picture. And this is uh, what I'm, uh, I'm trying to do uh, in many lectures over the last few months, including today, uh, I'll try to present to you over the next 40 or 45 minutes, the general picture of, this, uh, of the organization and the evolution of the world of viruses, and then, towards the end, uh, speak uh, about coronaviruses more specifically. Uh, so I start with this slide showing uh, my, my lab, my research group at the NCBI in the happier days before the pandemic. As you see, this is a large group, uh, and we study all kinds of aspects of um, evolutionary genomics from highly specific ones, like the study of the evolution of a particular virus or uh, two or uh, uh, general uh, theory. Today, though, it is the global picture of virus evolution. To begin with, I um, want to emphasize, this is one of the important messages, the important take-home messages from today's lecture, I think, uh, um, that viruses are truly dominant entities in the biosphere, uh, both physically and genetically. Yes, in particular, Alone lately uh, by the advances of viral metagenomics, studies of virons, uh, uh, which we shall discuss uh, in a few minutes. Um, right now, I want to note that the amount of viruses uh, that are present in the biosphere at any given moment uh, is not just astronomical, it is hyper astronomical. In, um, in a single milliliter, say, of sea water, depending on the richness of the particular habitat, uh, you will be able to detect the whopping uh, um, uh, million to billion of uh, uh, virus particles, which is typically uh, um, one or two orders of magnitude more uh, than the number of cells uh, in uh, uh, the same uh, sample. And the uh, uh, planet-wide, this amounts to the incredible number of about 10 to the 31st uh, virus particles present at any uh, given moment. And the mm, uh, genetic diversity of viruses is commensurate to this abundance, uh, such that uh, the, the majority of uh, distinct genes uh, on our planet are actually found in virus uh, genomes. Mm. Um, as, a, as, a, as a little funny uh, comparison to me, there are uh, about 10 to the 31st virion on Earth, virions on Earth uh, at any moment, uh, compared to about 10 to the 24th stars in the observable uh, region of our uh, universe. So, uh, 10 million more viruses. Stars. Okay. Uh, 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 but, but these are numbers. And I, I would like to 
remind you something that is textbook knowledge, but it's still, um, I think, crucial to reflect on uh, that um, uh, viruses are very distinct, not only quantitatively, not uh, only in terms of the of these huge numbers, uh, but also um, uh, qualitatively, uh, with regard to the uh, routes of um, the genetic um, of the ways um, they store and express uh, genetic information. As we all know, we all, uh, all of us cellular life forms uh, use the same uh, universal uh, uh, scheme of genetic information storage uh, and expression. Uh, our genomes uh, consist of huge molecules of double-stranded DNA, uh, uh, which are uh, expressed to produce uh, a great variety of RNAs, uh, including uh, diverse uh, messenger RNAs uh, that are used uh, to produce proteins in the process of translation. Uh, this is uniform everywhere uh, throughout the biosphere, except in viruses, uh, um, uh, which, in contrast, explore uh, um, uh, all the logical possibilities of, um, of uh, um, uh, using different types of nucleic acids. Uh, we are well aware of plentiful uh, viruses and single-stranded small DNA genomes of RNA viruses uh, that have either double-stranded RNA genomes, or, um, when I say genes, that means nucleic acid packed into the, into the variant, uh, or, or, um, or single-stranded nucleic acid, uh, single-stranded RNA, either of the same polarity as the messenger RNA for production of, of virus proteins, or of the uh, um, um, complementary uh, polarities, so no, negative sense RNA, uh, uh, and then uh, there are also viruses that uh, um, package either single-stranded RNA or, or uh, um, double-stranded DNA, but then use uh, a reverse transcription uh, step production of uh, DNA and RNA template in the uh, um, uh, reproduction cycles. Uh, um, uh, so, um, in a sense, in terms of spanning the genetic space, the space of uh, genetic mechanisms, uh, viruses are uh, far more uh, diverse and way more interesting than cellular life forms. Uh, as as uh, evolutionary biologists, we immediately ask, how did this all come to be? And here, there are some um, very important um, principles that, or major statements that have to be made. Uh, first of all, uh, genetic parasites are ubiquitous and, in a sense, I believe, um, uh, theoretically inevitable uh, um, uh, as um, uh, satellites of all cellular organisms. Uh, whenever you have a cellular life form, uh, uh, it's necessarily attacked by multiple um, uh, gene uh, genetic parasites, viruses, transposals, and others. Uh, another uh, crucial point to remember, uh, to note, uh, is that uh, there is clearly no common ancestry to all viruses, because simply there is not a single universal gene, a gene that would be uh, conserved in all viruses, nothing that could serve as the equivalent of ribosomal RNA or ribosomal proteins, the, those uh, um, universal genes uh, that uh, um, can and are uh, successfully used uh, um, to build uh, the, um, the all-encompassing phylogenetic trees of cellular life, the tree of life, uh, as it said uh, um, uh, for short. Uh, uh, the tree of viruses is not is simply not possible in principle. Taking all these together, um, one cannot help coming up with a uh, rather um, remarkable proposition. Namely, it, could it be uh, that viral viruses, or perhaps we should not be talking about viruses before cells at all, uh, but um, uh, virus-like entities, could they have been 
so to speak, nature's original testing ground uh, for genetic systems. Could they come uh, from uh, uh, the early steps in the evolution of life or even pre-life uh, uh, when uh, the genetic system uh, uh, was not yet uh, fully uh, established? We shall investigate this uh, in the, uh, this possibility in the next um, a few months. Uh, um, so, uh, people have been, um, scientists have been uh, discussing uh, um, evolution of bio or origins of viruses um, pretty much since the time uh, um, viruses have been uh, um, discovered and understood as intracellular parasites, uh, which was more than uh, 100 years ago. Um, um, so there were there there have been um, three principal classes of hypotheses on the evolution of viruses discussed in the literature. Mm -hmm. To start at the beginning, so to speak, the virus early hypothesis that reflect the idea I have already alluded to, namely the possibility uh, that virus-like elements uh, precede cells in the evolution of life. And virus genomes, we are speaking in more modern language, come from the pool of primordial replicons at the precellular stage of um, In contrast to this, uh, um, uh, there are regression hypotheses of virus evolution. Uh, um, uh, those scenarios in which uh, um, viruses are the ultimate uh, um, product of uh, um, regressive uh, evolution of cellular parasites, such as perhaps intracellular uh, um, uh, bacteria. Mm. And finally, probably the most popular scenarios, the most popular group of scenarios, the escape gene hypothesis, uh, um, according to which uh, um, uh, viruses are descendants of uh, um, uh, regular host genes uh, that have uh, attained uh, replicative autonomy uh, and uh, uh, have become uh, genetic uh, parasites. For most of the um, century or even more, um, these ideas have been discussed. Uh, this has been somewhat, I, I wouldn't say idle, but speculative discussion. There were no tools uh, um, to try and differentiate uh, between uh, between uh, uh, these hypotheses or add specifics to any of them. This has changed. Uh, um, this has changed uh, um, uh, dramatically uh, um, uh, with the uh, availability of uh, um, multiple highly diverse virus genomes. Comparing these genomes, uh, we can't do um, some crucial generalization. As I uh, pointed out, uh, um, there isn't even a single gene that would have been uh, universal shared by, um, by all, universally shared by all uh, um, uh, viruses. Uh, so, so there is no chance whatsoever to put uh, all uh, um, viruses into the same or encompassing phylogenetic. But that does not mean that there isn't a uh, um, remarkable uh, evolutionary conservation. Fortunately, there is. In particular, a uh, um, comparative analysis of virus genomes uh, um, allows us to review uh, um, several virus hallmark genes, genes that are shared by a great variety of viruses uh, um, and encode uh, um, uh, key proteins involved in the uh, replication of viruses and the uh, formation in the uh, virus particles. Here are uh, the schematic structural models for some of these uh, hallmark proteins, the most common one, such as uh, 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 so-called single jelly roll and double jelly roll capsid proteins, uh, which form uh, the variants of the majority of viruses, the icosahedral uh, uh, virus uh, particles. Uh, as well uh, um, uh, as uh, um, genes encoding proteins uh, involved in unique processes of the replication of virus genomes, such as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, 
that is shared by all RNA viruses, reverse transcriptase, this is shared by uh, all reverse transcribing viruses, and a few um, others. Remarkably, uh, um, uh, these um, um, Homer genes uh, um, bring together so-called different Baltimore classes of viruses, those classes uh, um, that I discussed in the introduction, uh, um, um, uh, which uh, correspond to viruses with different types of genetic uh, um, cycles. Um, despite these fundamental differences, uh, um, uh, there is some evolutionary uh, um, commonality uh, um, between these different uh, uh, these viruses with different replication and expression strategies, and this is what we must explore if we want to go deep back into virus evolution. And this is what we did over the last few years with my colleagues, uh, trying to be systematic, uh, and to begin with uh, the replication modules of all kinds of different viruses. Uh, we uh, identify deep commonality uh, underneath uh, uh, the apparent uh, diversity. So, uh, all groups of viruses, pretty much all groups of viruses, uh, encode uh, enzymes catalyzing uh, the uh, uh, replication of, of the genome, either the entire replication process or just its initiation. Uh, so, these are different kind of polymerases, such as RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, reverse transcriptase, family B DNA polymerases that um, um, is uh, or, fam or family A DNA polymerases that are responsible uh, for replication of the genomes of uh, double-stranded DNA viruses, primases, um, uh, or replication initiation and uh, uh, nucleases. They are highly diverse enzymes. If you run a uh, um, blast search of, the, let's say, all virus proteins, you will not see any similarity uh, between uh, uh, these uh, different classes of uh, virus replication enzymes. However, if you perform structural comparison, uh, uh, the picture changes uh, in that uh, we identify single structural bases uh, underneath all this diversity uh, in the form of the so-called um, uh, RNA uh, recognition motif uh, um, fold, uh, one of the most, probably the most common uh, nucleic acid binding domain uh, in nature that has this uh, simple uh, robust structure uh, shown here. Uh, the majority of the RRM domains are non-catalytic, they just bind RNA or DNA. Uh, but apparently, uh, uh, this ancestral non-catalytic uh, nucleic acid binding domain uh, has evolved uh, um, into all these uh, catalytically uh, active proteins uh, mediating uh, uh, genome uh, uh, replication, uh, um, suggesting uh, um, very deep uh, um, evolutionary roots of these uh, of virus replication machineries. Uh, um, evolutionary roots uh, that indeed could go back all the way to precellular stage of life's evolution and even um, to the two hypothetical but the likely existing uh, primordial RNA world. There are such domains uh, might have been among the first protein entities. Uh, um, um, facility functioning as cofactors to ribozyme polymerases. Uh, um, next, though, uh, um, uh, we uh, um, uh, look into the um, likely origins of uh, um, virus structural parties, morphogenetic modules, as we can call them collectively. And here, in this case, we see um, um, a very different um, um, type of picture. Um, um, the, um, basically uh, can pinpoint the origin from specific cellular proteins, primarily proteins uh, um, that bind uh, nucleic acid binding. Uh, nucleic acids are carbohydrates uh, uh, that in retrospect is perhaps not surprising because this is what you um, need uh, from a, uh, from a uh, virion uh, protein to bind. Uh, 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 virus 
uh, nucleic acids, and we can trace either this type of origin for uh, nearly all uh, major structural proteins of viruses. Um, taken together, uh, these two lines of analysis suggest a unifying, what I call, chimeric scenario for virus origin, um, which um, posits that there, um, the replication of structural modules uh, of viruses have uh, um, uh, different origins, according to the um, two different scenarios that I outlined uh, a minute uh, ago. Uh, namely, that the replication apparatus of virus actually does come from the uh, primordial pool of um, replicators that antedated uh, the emergence of modern type cells. Uh, but the structural components of viruses uh, have been uh, recruited uh, from host proteins, according, if you look to the escape gene scenario, at different uh, stages of. Uh, uh, evolution. So, the point that I uh, wanted to bring home here um, is that nowadays, uh, thanks to the advances of genomics and metagenomics, uh, um, uh, the uh, um, uh, discussion of, of um, uh, the origin of the ultimate origin of viruses has uh, um, uh, graduated uh, from the uh, um, purely speculative subject to uh, the scientific questions that we can investigate uh, and uh, get uh, likely defendable answers. Uh, it's time, however, to uh, move to um, from the deepest questions of evolution uh, to move to more more specific uh, aspects of, of the um, study of the world of viruses, and even to speak of some methodologies in particular or uh, the, um, the, what I call, uh, metavirionics, or what may be called uh, virus metagenomics, uh, um, uh, which uh, um, brought a true, even if somewhat quiet, uh, revolution uh, um, to the study of, um, of uh, um, uh, virus diversity and accordingly understanding uh, um, uh, viruses. So, so that we are on the same page, uh, um, metavirionics is a um, um, uh, sequencing of uh, the entirety of uh, DNA or RNA uh, from a, uh, um, in a virus fraction from a, uh, um, a particular habitat, circumventing the step of growing virus uh, in the laboratory and accordingly allowing us, at least ideally, uh, um, to uh, um, uh, get the uh, objective uh, picture of virus diversity. Uh, indeed, uh, over the last few years, uh, um, uh, virus metagenomics or metavirionics uh, um, have become uh, the main source of discovery of uh, um, new viruses, and uh, its role, its uh, um, contribution is rapidly growing, uh, um, so that even such a uh, conservative organization as the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses has now recognized formally uh, um, uh, that new groups of viruses can be officially established uh, based solely on um, metagenomic uh, sequencing without uh, anyone ever seeing the actual virus. And the reasons are very clear uh, if you uh, look at this slide, uh, which uh, shows the prevalence of different viruses uh, against the abundance estimated from the number of reads uh, um, in next generation sequencing, uh, um, in a survey of uh, different uh, regions of the world ocean. Um, so, um, the colored little circles uh, on this plot are, um, uh, are viruses discovered by traditional means uh, and associated with specific hosts, and the gray ones are uh, um, uh, those that are known solely from metagenomic uh, um, analysis. Um, so, you can see very clearly uh, that both the most um, widespread, the most prevalent viruses, and by far, because this will greatly scale, by far uh, the most uh, abundant uh, ones are known only from metagenomics. 
Uh, and this slide is more than three years old. I didn't update it. Uh, if I did, uh, these uh, colored circles uh, representing uh, traditionally uh, recognized viruses would be drawn uh, in the mass of, of the gray ones. We shall, we shall have a flavor of, of that uh, uh, expansion uh, of the virus well due to metagenomics in a few uh, minutes. Uh, so, in, I, I'm trying to uh, bring to your attention uh, that these novel approaches based on uh, next generation sequencing of the nucleic acids from uh, environments have plainly already revolutionized the study of viruses. Uh, and now we will get more specific uh, and uh, talk about what we have learned um, about the diversity of the virus world. Uh, primarily from metagenomic start with my favorite part, uh, the uh, expansion of the world of RNA uh, uh, viruses. So I emphasized uh, a few minutes ago uh, that there isn't even a single universal gene uh, uh, in all viruses. However, uh, there are certainly universal genes, there are certain genes uh, that are mm, conserved in all uh, vir mm, in all viruses uh, mm, in mm, uh, large virus classes. Uh, in particular, in all RNA all RNA viruses uh, have a single universal gene, uh, which fittingly encodes the enzyme responsible for the replication of all RNA genomes, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, or for short RDRP. Uh, mm, uh, mm, so the natural, and it's the only consistent uh, way to study uh, mm, uh, the evolution of RNA viruses in its entirety uh, uh, is through phylogenetic analysis of the RNA-dependent RNA polymerases. Uh, mm, and this is an exercise that my colleagues and I have undertaken repeatedly uh, mm, uh, over uh, mm, mm, uh, the last few years. I schematically show the bioinformatic uh, mm, uh, pipeline involved in such analysis. Uh, you know, these are um, mm, uh, highly diverse proteins, and there are many of them. We shall see how many in a moment. Uh, mm, uh, so this is not this is much easier said than done. Uh, constructing the um, you know, phylogenetic tree involves lots of iterations, uh, mm, uh, line construction, tree construction, and other. Uh, tricks. But at the end, we obtain uh, the complete tree of RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, which uh, very schematically uh, looks like this. Uh, mm, at that time, three years ago, uh, it uh, mm, included about uh, 5,000 distinct uh, RNA-dependent RNA polymerases, and we also added some reverse transcriptases to root uh, the tree. Mm, uh, in which about half of the branches were tradi from traditionally uh, characterized viruses, uh, and the other half uh, coming from uh, uh, metaviromics. Uh, uh, so here is that uh, tree with uh, different viruses mapped on it. Uh, uh, the key uh, thing about that uh, uh, tree is that in spite of the uh, extreme diversity of, uh, of the sequences, there is well-defined structure uh, uh, in, in the tree. Uh, and this is, of course, very, 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 very lucky that it exists. Uh, otherwise, it would give us little information uh, uh, about the global patterns uh, in virus evolution. Fortunately, this is not the case. Uh, uh, there are um, uh, five uh, mm, uh, distinct uh, mm, uh, branches uh, mm, uh, in this tree that corresponds uh, correspond now to the officially established file of our universes. We will come to that um, mm, uh, aspect soon. Uh, mm, and uh, mm, um, three of these branches include primarily uh, mm, uh, single stranded uh, positive sense uh, RNA uh, viruses with some admixture. Uh, of double-strand uh, RNA viruses. In the middle, uh, the fourth 
in response to double stranded RNA viruses completely, and the last uh, fifth one to negative strand uh, RNA uh, uh, viruses. And each of these major branches uh, includes viruses infecting diverse hosts, uh, um, such as animals and plants, uh, emphasizing uh, um, the um, apparently rather frequent um, um, change of virus host range, even between uh, very distant uh, um, hosts. Uh, so, um, uh, I could not uh, refrain uh, from uh, um, uh, mapping some uh, major human pathogenic viruses on these three, um, and here are the notorious uh, coronaviruses in the middle of this branch two here, um, um, interestingly joined in the same um, tree branch uh, um, uh, with uh, some much simpler viruses, the much simpler genomes, including those infecting plants in that pattern that I already uh, noticed. Uh, and here, scattered uh, over these branches are other uh, human uh, pathogenic viruses. Of course, it's possible to populate the three more uh, uh, the pathogenic viruses. We do go in each of these four branches, ex with the exception of this one, which includes primarily um, viruses of uh, prokaryotes. So I think it's somewhat important to um, realize and remember uh, that um, um, viruses that cause disease and trouble us are um, evolutionarily extremely diverse. They're uh, um, scattered uh, um, across most of this tree. You can also detect uh, um, uh, um, some major trends in the uh, um, uh, evolution of RNA viruses, in particular, in positive sense, uh, RNA viruses which represent the essential majority uh, um, uh, of uh, RNA viruses. And the, um, um, once we map uh, different virus genes and domains uh, um, uh, on the branches of this tree, uh, um, we clearly uh, detect uh, the trends uh, uh, in virus evolution, the trend uh, for complexification, for uh, increase of genome uh, size and complexity uh, by uh, accretion of uh, multiple genes uh, primarily uh, recruited from the host. And uh, remarkably, uh, uh, this complexification culminates in none other than uh, coronaviruses, uh, which are uh, the um, most complex, uh, have the largest genomes uh, among all uh, known RNA viruses with all these uh, multiple genes involved both in various aspects of virus replication, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, repair or reading uh, of the um, uh, elongated RNA chains and uh, virus host interaction. However, we don't focus on that right now. Uh, we focus on the uh, diversity. Uh, uh, and I want to bring to your attention uh, that um, this diversity is, is huge. Uh, in particular, um, a study by Eddie Holmes and colleagues uh, uh, back in uh, 2015, 2016, uh, um, uh, um, sequencing of uh, um, diverse metal genomes uh, um, uh, has doubled the known diversity of RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Um, our own study, uh, performed a little bit later, published last year, uh, um, uh, actually uh, um, brought even, in, in a sense, an even more astonishing result uh, because uh, um, uh, um, we doubled the known diversity again, uh, the number of uh, um, uh, distinct uh, um, RNA viruses that are not very close to any others, um, by analyzing uh, exhaustively uh, just one metaviron from uh, the estuary of the Yangtze River uh, in China, with our Chinese uh, collaborators, um, uh, so we um, studied all the 
of um, RNA-dependent RNA polymerases uh, detected uh, in this uh, metatranscriptome from this uh, large uh, sample uh, and increased uh, the uh, number of unique RNA viruses from about 5,000 to about 10,000. Uh, um, there was a variety of interesting novel group groups uh, um, of viruses detected in that study with genome organizations that have not been seen before. Um, we couldn't have a chance to go into the details here uh, and might not be essential, uh, but it's also uh, uh, worth noting that at least when it comes to these five major groups, five phyla, the great majority of the new sequences uh, uh, fall into the already established uh, major uh, branches, suggesting uh, that uh, although the diversity, the micro diversity is, is enormous, uh, in terms of the uh, global structure of the major divisions of RNA viruses, we already may have a relatively stable picture. Uh, we are now in the process of uh, completing and submitting uh, for publication uh, uh, another much bigger study where we uh, analyze the diversity of RNA-dependent RNA, RNA uh, polymerases and, of course, other uh, um, uh, virus genes, data permitting, in uh, about 4,000 uh, diverse uh, metatranscriptomes. Uh, um, and what we notice here is, is rather notable uh, um, in the sense that we see um, only a minor increase in the number of these major branches. Uh, two new ones, uh, apparently, and they're small. Uh, but um, at the more shallow phylogenetic levels, even starting with the um, classes within the phyla, we see uh, about a five times increase um, in the uh, RNA virus uh, diversity. Uh, uh, given the massive scale, of, of, of this of this uh, work, uh, it seems like that although it seems like although uh, um, uh, the saturation of the um, RNA virus diversity is still far, uh, um, we may be already seeing signs of it uh, um, coming um, uh, with relatively moderate uh, increase, so that um, hopefully. Uh, within the next few iterations, we might come to something close to a complete picture of, of um, RNA virus diversity on Earth. Uh, okay, so this is what I uh, had the time to tell you uh, about RNA viruses. Uh, and now we will go very quickly, uh, uh, indeed in just a few minutes, uh, through uh, the rest of the virus world. Just to uh, emphasize the major trends and the emerging big picture. Mm. Uh, so, uh, reverse trans transcribing uh, virus fear, uh, um, RNA and DNA viruses that use reverse transcription uh, step in the uh, reproduction. We see a picture that is sort of, uh, this is the uh, schematic representation of the reverse transcriptase phylogenetic tree. Uh, and what we see here is a picture resembling that for uh, um, RNA viruses uh, with uh, um, uh, six uh, um, uh, major uh, um, branches, uh, two uh, for reverse transcribing viruses with DNA genomes, the rest is RNA uh, genomes, well defined major branches, uh, um, one of which uh, happens to include such a notoriously uh, well known uh, human pathogen as HIV. Uh, and another one, uh, also a major uh, human uh, pathogen, hepatitis B virus. Mm, uh, mm, uh, when we come to the evolution of single-stranded uh, mm, uh, DNA uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, virus sphere, uh, mm, we are in for quite an interesting mm, surprise, uh, mm, I think, because what we uh, were able to demonstrate is that Single-stranded DNA viruses evolved on multiple 
probably quite many independent occasions uh, um, from um, two independent sources, uh, four distinct sources. Uh, um, the, rep uh, the replication module of uh, um, uh, the genes encoding proteins involved in the replication of these viruses come from small plasmids replicating by a uh, rolling circle uh, um, mechanism. Uh, whereas the capsid proteins are uh, um, stolen, so to speak, from RNA uh, viruses and got incorporated into these genomes by uh, reverse transcription. And as I say, uh, uh, this is a uh, route of evolution that recapitul uh, has been recapitulated uh, many times in the evolutionary history of single-stranded DNA viruses that also uh, gave rise uh, to two families of uh, mm, small viruses with small double-stranded uh, mm, circular DNA genomes, mm, mm, papillomaviruses and polyomaviruses, also including major human. And then finally, uh, last but not least, uh, the largest part of the virus world, the double-stranded DNA mm, uh, virus pair, um, in which case, um, in this part of the virus world alone, there isn't a single universal gene. Uh, a phylogenetic tree uh, cannot be built uh, to represent the entire picture of the evolution. So we have to uh, turn to different analytic methodologies. Uh, in particular, we uh, uh, analyzed uh, in uh, detail so-called bipartite uh, networks of um, gene sharing where these, these colored circles represent uh, different groups of viruses and these, these small circles uh, represent genes and then, uh, gene, uh, then genes are shared. Uh, uh, these, uh, the viruses are uh, connected and then uh, we apply uh, the well-developed algorithms for detecting distinct modules or communities in, in such uh, uh, networks, and when we do so, uh, um, several modules neatly fall out. Uh, two of these are small uh, and include uh, polyoma and papilloma viruses originating from single-stranded DNA viruses that we already discussed. Uh, uh, another relatively small module um, combines uh, all kinds of um, exotic or viruses infecting mm, hyperthermophilic archaea. And these two huge super modules uh, mm, include uh, the well known familiar uh, double stranded DNA viruses. In particular, uh, mm, uh, this one uh, mm, consists of tailed bacteriophages like 47 lambda and etc. Uh, mm, uh, well known as well as herpes viruses, um, pathogenic uh, viruses of animals, uh, whereas this um, super uh, module includes more obscure uh, bacteriophages, uh, but well uh, known uh, um, viruses of eukaryotes uh, with exahedral uh, variants such as adenoviruses, uh, pox viruses, uh, um, uh, and, uh, all, uh, and the popular giant viruses such as Mini and Pandora. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 these two supermodules of DNA viruses are readily uh, delineated in such analysis because they have completely unrelated morphogenetic modules, whereas the replication modules are highly diverse even within each of these large groups. So it's time to summarize our understanding of the global organization of the world of viruses, uh, which has been officially translated uh, into mega taxonomy, uh, comprehensive uh, taxonomy going down to the deepest level, levels by the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. We have these uh, four uh, major realms, uh, which uh, is allowed the highest level or taxon of viruses without direct counterparts in the taxonomy of cellular organisms, or riboviri, which we discussed in some detail, RNA viruses, monodnaviri, single-stranded DNA viruses, 
uh, in two uh, rayons of double stranded uh, of viruses of double stranded DNA genomes. Um, no, more recently, uh, um, after uh, that major core taxonomy has been completed, um, two more small realms have been um, delineated. One includes um, uh, one is called the Ribosi virion, includes these very um, fascinating agents uh, um, related to hepatitis um, um, delta. Uh, uh, virus, which is a small circular uh, uh, RNA uh, encoding a virus capsid protein, um, similar to uh, uh, viroids, a plant agent, smallest infectious agents known in plants that encode no proteins, but in this case, provirus that does encode the protein, completely unrelated um, to those major viral realms. And the second smaller realm is called called Edna viria. It's somewhat bigger than this, but not huge either. It all consists of mm, rod-shaped and filamentous viruses mm, infecting hypertrophilic archaea and uh, packaging into variants unexpectedly a form of uh, mm, uh, DNA. Um, mm, I think that mm, the discovery of, mm, of these two um, small realms of viruses sort of shows us the future uh, uh, where uh, there is no chance to discover uh, large new realms, but uh, a variety of small exotic ones uh, remain to be delineated. Also, I will go uh, quickly uh, through several slides uh, that uh, depict uh, more deta detailed taxonomic organization of these uh, virus realms down to the level of order. Um, we cannot uh, discuss this, just to show you uh, uh, that uh, uh, these uh, uh, detailed taxonomies have, uh, have all been developed based on um, uh, genome comparisons for, for RNA viruses, for single-stranded DNA viruses, uh, one uh, realm of double-stranded DNA viruses, another realm of double-stranded DNA viruses, um, and all this uh, can be um, at a higher level. All this uh, can be uh, um, connected into a global network of evolutionary relationship in the uh, world of viruses uh, where uh, different uh, Baltimore classes, uh, double-stranded RNA, positive sense RNA, uh, single-stranded DNA, etc., uh, are uh, uh, linked in a somewhat complex way uh, by uh, shared uh, hallmark uh, um, uh, genes, uh, um, such as, for instance, uh, these five uh, Baltimore uh, classes all um, share a common origin, uh, um, and, but in contrast, the uh, double-stranded DNA viruses uh, form several um, unrelated realms. Now, I would like to uh, uh, generalize uh, mm, mm, uh, for a few uh, moments. Recently, my colleagues and I published this paper on the uh, mm, uh, definition of uh, mm, viruses, if anyone is interested, in, mm, defined by the position of the virus sphere, sphere in the space, in the larger space of uh, replicators. So, here we go to uh, for a moment into the realm of theoretical biology, uh, uh, if you will, and, and must indicate uh, that um, um, viruses belong to the larger class, uh, um, larger set of um, uh, replicators. Replicators are uh, um, biological entities that uh, replicate their genomes, uh, include some means to replicate their genomes, but uh, lack metabolism and in particular energy uh, um, transformation, as opposed to uh, um, uh, reproducers such as cells, uh, which are uh, um, which do possess uh, these capabilities. And viruses are a special class of replicators uh, that encode uh, their own uh, um, uh, capsid protein. So we show um, um, bona fide viruses here in the center of this shape, 
um, um, this may be called orto biosphere, which includes uh, um, so far these six realms of uh, diverse true viruses, surrounded by what may be called a peri uh, um, uh, virosphere, which is inhabited by all kinds of uh, um, uh, replicators that are related to viruses but do not fit this definition, do not encode their own uh, um, capsid protein. And uh, um, this peri virosphere, in turn, is immersed. Uh, uh, within uh, the larger uh, replicator space, which includes all kinds of replicators, um, both selfish elements, uh, transposons, plasmids, etc., uh, and uh, um, genomes of cellular life forms. So, before I close my lecture today, uh, um, uh, I want to um, show a few more specific vignettes uh, exploring. Uh, um, important aspects of, um, of the you know, world of viruses, or more specific aspects of the world of viruses. Uh, um, I wouldn't like, by any account, uh, to leave you with the impression uh, that uh, all the most interesting things in the world of viruses uh, um, have been already studied. This is decidedly not the case, uh, especially uh, um, uh, given um, um, uh, the um, rather spectacular advances of metagenomics and metabiomics, as I will illustrate in the next couple of minutes uh, um, um, on the um, example of the discovery of the most abundant human associated virus. So, uh, the most abundant human associated viruses are not agents of any human disease, uh, um, uh, they do not cause any any pandemic or anything like that. Rather, they are bacteriophages uh, uh, that um, uh, infect uh, certain groups of bacteria uh, um, in our guts, in our mouths, etc. The astonishing fact uh, is that uh, the most abundant uh, bacteriophage associated with the human body. Mm, mm, has been completely unknown until uh, mm, um, uh, the advent of uh, mm, uh, metagenomics. And then, about well, seven years ago, uh, mm, it has been, uh, this genome has been assembled from uh, mm, mm, multiple human gut uh, mm, uh, metagenomes and called cross phage uh, mm, from cross um, mm, uh, assembly. Uh, mm, uh, so, this uh, mm, uh, cross phage uh, mm, uh, is, or, or its close relatives, uh, are found in um, mm, half of human gut virons, if not more, uh, mm, where they can comprise, astonishingly, up to 90% of the mm, uh, mm, sequences of the, in the um, mm, virus fraction. So, by far, these are the most abundant human associated viruses that have been uh, mm, completely unknown until. Uh, mm, uh, metagenomics has come of edge. Uh, mm. Also remarkably, that this discovery was made, it seemed like this virus comes from another planet. Uh, that is, the great majority of the predicted proteins uh, mm, had no detectable homologs, or uh, the, uh, the capsid proteins and main components of the replication machinery were not identified, and it was really very incognito. Uh, mm, so, in some points, uh, my colleagues and I started got very intrigued uh, by these genomes, um, started investigating in detail, applying the most uh, powerful methods for um, um, the sequence and then uh, structure uh, comparison. Unfortunately, we made some problems. Uh, um, we um, identified the uh, um, key uh, proteins in these uh, um, uh, viruses, and most importantly, uh, um, discovered an entire uh, mm, uh, big uh, mm, uh, family of related viruses, so that mm, most um, mm, abundant human-associated virus and its close relatives are here, uh, mm, uh, but uh, mm, uh, our mm, uh, analysis uh, resulted in the identification of this uh, mm, much more uh, diverse and large uh, family, primarily uh, mm, associated with uh, mm, animal 
both but not entirely some from the environment uh, uh, which uh, um, spend quite a large region of the sequence space but are still distinct from uh, all other uh, bacteria which is recently um, uh, further um, expanded uh, this analysis uh, and now we uh, um, uh, uh, we identified thousands of um, uh, viruses uh, in this uh, uh, group of uh, the most likely practically already uh, accepted as a new uh, bacteriophage order uh, with a variety of distinct families and interestingly uh, um, representatives of some of these families uh, um, uh, comprise uh, um, uh, unique genomic features, such as a variety uh, of genes that are uh, um, uh, uh, interrupted uh, by uh, um, uh, multiple uh, uh, introns and interns and by some other elements uh, which are completely novel, which we don't uh, recognize, um, um, which most likely are indicative of completely unknown uh, modes of uh, gene transcription, as well as the uh, ingenious use of alternative genetic codes. So, uh, it's not only new uh, texts and new groups of viruses that are being discovered by these approaches, but also new biology that remains to be investigated experimentally. All right. Uh, and in the last few minutes of my um, lecture, uh, I cannot avoid a subject that I probably would prefer not to touch uh, um, on a better day, uh, but we must. Uh, and that's uh, adaptive evolution of SARS-CoV-2 uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Having uh, um, studied evolution of viruses for decades, uh, um, once, once something like this happens, uh, I guess you uh, cannot avoid launching in that research, so we did. Uh, um, it's a very uh, uh, different uh, um, type of research where you have to uh, um, construct painstakingly uh, huge phylogenetic trees, uh, including uh, hundreds of thousands, but now millions of uh, um, um, genomes closely related, which um, facilitates uh, um, uh, the, the construction of the alignment underlying uh, uh, the trees. Uh, but it's still a very, very technically demanding task uh, because of the um, uh, sheer uh, amount. Um, of these um, genomes, nevertheless, these trees can be built, um, and and they show uh, a number of uh, clear uh, features uh, in particular several uh, distinct partitions and some tight clades corresponding to variants, including variants of concern. Um, um, shown here, these gray um, um, uh, branches. Um, Mostly, um, um, these genomes evolve under purifying selection, showing not, um, not surprisingly that they are already quite adapted uh, to the to the mammalian course. But we identified in the genome uh, um, uh, about 100 sites um, enriched, as also could be predicted, uh, in spike and more unexpected in nuclear protein uh, genes. Uh, where um, mutations occur recurrently uh, many times uh, across the tree, uh, um, uh, which is best explained by positive uh, um, uh, selection. There are distinct uh, um, amino acid replacement signatures uh, um, uh, for these different partitions in the tree. Uh, and apparently, uh, um, uh, these positively selected sites form uh, um, a connected network of uh, uh, epistatic interaction as indicating by the uh, mm, mm, core um, mm, uh, occurrence, primarily again in spike and nuclear protein uh, mm, genes. The phylogenetic partitions uh, mm, of SARS-CoV-2 uh, show different regional dynamics in different parts of the world, uh, mm, supporting the objective reality of these partitions. 
<clears throat> and probably the main thing that we are seeing here is a steady diversification of <clears throat> SARS-CoV-2, at least prior to the onset of massive vaccination, but not only. Uh, uh, regrettably, the diversity increases steadily, as one can see, uh, both within of large world regions, continents, uh, and between uh, those, to the extent that in this paper published uh, a few months ago, uh, we predicted the possibility of speciation of SARS-CoV-2, and it cannot be ruled out with this Omicron uh, variant that appeared uh, uh, a few days ago, that came before a few days ago, uh, uh, we are already witnessing that um, uh, the speciation of viruses, the formation of new species. Uh, and the final uh, subject that I want to uh, cover uh, uh, very uh, briefly, uh, uh, which evidently is most timely at the time of massive vaccination, is the emergence of antibody escape mutants. How likely, uh, how prone are different variants uh, of the virus um, to uh, the emergence of such uh, um, escape variants, how dangerous uh, they're likely uh, to be. Mm -hmm. So, this is not easy to evaluate, but not impossible either. Um, uh, it has to be kept in mind uh, that uh, the virus, uh, virus's life, so to speak, is not easy. Uh, it faces a, a trade-off uh, between um, um, binding to the receptor uh, um, and escaping neutralizing antibodies, not binding tightly to neutralizing antibodies, and the interfaces overlap that interact with the receptor and antibodies. So it's not necessarily an easy um, um, uh, task. So we try to uh, um, model uh, the receptor spike uh, um, uh, the spike receptor uh, interactions and uh, um, estimate the energy uh, um, using the Rosetta uh, um, uh, package uh, and um, at the same time um, you know, model the interaction with neutralizing antibodies and it's, uh, uh, um, estimate that uh, energy and determine which variants are determine the um, degree of epistasis, the interaction. Mm, uh, the effect, combined effect of different mutations at these interfaces and uh, determine which uh, variants are more and which are less likely to acquire a uh, vaccine uh, mm, escape amino acid replacements, the realization of the structures. Mm, mm. Uh, basically, mm, this, there is this parameter space where he, here you have the energy of the cost of antibody uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, interaction uh, mm, uh, and mm, mm, um, on this axis you have the uh, energy of the uh, cost of the uh, mm, uh, interaction with the uh, mm, uh, receptor uh, mm, and mm, schematically this is the mm, uh, spike receptor interaction this is the mm, mm, spice antibody uh, mm, interaction and in this uh, for hundreds, uh, nothing bad happens. Virus either becomes non viable because it tightly interacts with the antibody and not with the receptor as a result of uh, mutations, or nothing much happens. Mm, but here, here is the dangerous area uh, where uh, the interaction uh, the, the receptor remains tight. Uh, there is the um, interaction with the antibody significantly weakens, that is schematic, uh, and then we um, actually predict the energies of this uh, interaction. We see, fortunately, that this uh, upper left quadrant uh, that uh, where um, the escape variants would reside is not very heavily populated, and in particular, it is not uh, very uh, heavily uh, populated in the delta variant, more so in the gamma variant, uh, mm, uh, and um, mm, here we see uh, mm, uh, these uh, mutations by mm, side by side, uh, mm, and uh, for the gamma variant, 
uh, there are several um, sites where uh, um, uh, mutations uh, um, lead to uh, um, antibody, uh, to predicted antibody uh, escape, uh, um, whereas um, this effect is virtually not seen with the uh, um, Delta variant. Um, um, so it's time for me to make uh, conclusions uh, um, from this entire lecture. Uh, and as, as conclusions, I first of all want to remind you uh, that viruses are basically dominant entities in the biosphere. They are ubiquitous and enormously abundant, representing a highly diverse, um, rich virus world, uh, which we now can investigate with unprecedented efficiency using metabiromics. Uh, um, or the, um, our knowledge of the diversity of viruses is still far from saturation, but most major groups, most uh, groups at the level of phyla probably are already known, and we might be settling on the stable overall scenario of virus evolution and accordingly the stable mega taxonomy. On smaller scale, however, uh, mm, major and exciting discoveries remain to be made, such as illustrated by the discovery of the cross like mm, uh, phages. Mm. Nowadays, we also must focus on microevolution, uh, and microevolution analysis informs us of evolutionary regimes of pathogenic viruses and reveals the routes of virus adaptation. Mm. Uh, acknowledge the contributors to all these diverse directions of our exploration of the uh, virus world, uh, several uh, members of my research group and uh, mm, uh, the key uh, collaborators from a variety of institutions around the world. Thank you all very much for your attention.